Welcome back to a British Expat in the Philippines. We're here again in the house uh, and we're going to today show you the tools that are required and also some basic little hints for installing PPR which is the PVC high pressure pipe used here in the Philippines for water supply. So if you watch carefully I'll show you a few important things. Now I'd like to show you the essential tools that you need for the job. The first thing of course is if you haven't got the help of one of these from a friend or a neighbour, you might be able to hire them, but this one here, the fusion tool, is from Fildex, which is the same manufacturer of the pipe system itself. It comes with a, a metal stand, so as to hold it while it's held. Then, like any soldering iron, it supports itself. And um, this one was 999, normally, I believe, 1899, so it was 50% off. So, you have to look around on those either. Sometimes you find some pretty good deals, but the, the general rule of thumb is that they run from, if you get them on special, from about a thousand pesos up to about 1850. Some of them are higher, maybe two, three, two, four. It's up to you which one you have. Now, to cut the pipe, you'll need a hand-operated uh, cutter. It's nothing fancy, it's just basically pressure. It's applied to a piece of pipe, and you literally just push and cut a nice clean uh, joint on the end of the pipe. These are around, uh, I think this is 120. And this is from the company called Tolson. Tolson. Again, quite a well known brand here in the Philippines. Uh, you will probably need a tape measure essentially to ensure you have the right length of pipe. And uh, like I was saying before, when you need to measure, more importantly than the actual piece of pipe, but the actual fitting that it's going into, you'll notice the ridge inside. If you put a pencil in there and you measure that against you measure it against the tape measure itself, it's a little bit over two inches. So half an inch exactly would be fine to put your marking on. Now if you want fittings, you can pay up to say 255, 260 for a shut-off valve of reasonable quality. But anything from 19 pesos or 25, depending on where you buy, for a straight joiner, again, maybe around 40 pesos for the elbows, 25 some places. Some of the more odd shapes, uh, maybe 60 pesos. But generally speaking, most of the fittings, such as these, that's a, a straight joiner in there and a male connection and that's the same but the female with a female connection straight joiner and a female connection you can buy elbows with a male connection and also with a female connection so most of them you can get plastic uh, shut off valves i don't recommend those i've found that when i have used them before they're not that uh, reliable. I prefer the screw type one, which you can replace the actual uh, shaft quite easily. So, most of the fittings are easily obtained. If you buy them locally in the shop, you may pay a little bit more. But the advantage of buying them in Lazada is that you can pick the, 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 the packet size most of the ones that they have on Lazada, it's not really by the time you pay for the postage, it's not really worth buying one item. So if you buy them in bulk, like in four or five pieces to a pack, that's a much more economical way of buying them. And I've found that you can make a saving, providing you're prepared to wait for only a week for the supply. So that's what you really need. Uh, you might need a Stanley knife or something to cut and sharpen your pencil clear off any burrs that are on things that you're not happy with. A little bit of sandpaper maybe wouldn't hurt or emery cloth. 
Apart from that, there's not really anything more that you need in terms of tools, except your trusty friend to hold the, uh, the tool to assist you uh, to get a good connection. So, with that in mind, we'll carry on with the rest of what we have to show you. It pays to, to purchase in bulk, because you always need a few extra when you make a mistake or something like that. But, as an example, these are ones that have been used and no longer wanted. But I have kept them because you could actually maybe use them later on. So I always make sure I cut a little bit more off on the end of each joint because you can maybe use that and you can join the, the pieces together. Now, one little trick that I have noticed is that when you come to... Oh yes, this one here is another version of the shut-off valve. You can buy them with fancier knobs, which I'll show you later on that I'm using in the shower area. Now, the one thing that I've found, you, you, we recommend on the half-inch one that you count to six seconds maximum on the iron. In other words, when you put them in the iron to mould them ready to join, that you count like one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you separate them and then at that point because they're both hot and ready to go you just push them in there together up to the point where the rim where it has been attached to the iron itself this creates like a little bit of a, a melted lip on it now one thing I've noticed in here in the process of doing this job and I think it's important if I stick the pencil in, just to give you a guide, as you can see, if I run the pencil inside, it hits a, it hits a, the back of the, the actual elbow. If you look inside the elbow, there's a rim inside there, and when you stick the pencil in, it comes to that point. Now, if you put your finger there, that approximately is half an inch, just a little over half an inch. Now. Before I do the actual heating on, on the uh, iron, I actually mark, just approximately, you could actually measure it, I just put a line there like that. I just put a little line there for, for that purpose. Sorry about the spit. Anyway, you imagine that this one is hot, and this one now is hot. But what I've done is, when you're actually applying it to the iron, I'll bring the iron up so you can see what I'm doing. It's not on, so that I'm not burning my hand. When this goes into the uh, fitting, and it's because it's hot, it just pushes in quite easily. Sometimes you have to just give it a bit of a hard push. But if you only take it to that point, to that line, you push it in to the point where it's starting to create a little lip on the outside, up to that point. If you go beyond that, the problem with that is the actual diameter that you're left with after it's, uh, so I'll use the word cooked, melted, actually uh, contracts. It actually becomes smaller and smaller because as you push the item, the end that you're going to join into the iron, in effect it's melting and the melting has got to go somewhere. It, it, it has an effect on the pipe. So what you don't want is to have a pipe in your system, really, that's supposed to be that diameter, but by the time you've cooked it, or melted it, it goes down to maybe just a baby, maybe even quarter of an inch gap, which obviously will create friction, and in time, it may cause a, a problem with your connection, simply because it's the water has been forced through at a higher pressure and it's got nowhere to go, so it's a bit like a shower head. It becomes uh, under pressure, I suppose. So my advice always is to mark them, or at least be aware. Another way of doing it is if you have the line where all of the information is, if you, for argument's sake, put your line where we Draw and roll, just take it back around there. It doesn't have to have a line, but if you know it's half an inch, what you do is you only take it as far as the, the edge of the zero, or the O. 
right? So that gives you a guide. But that's a very important thing because you really don't want your pipes to be construed down to a smaller diameter inside. So if you follow that, you should have a pretty good go. Now the other thing, of course, is you can do it on your own, but it's always good to have somebody who understands the idea that they've got to hold the iron extremely firmly. You have to hold the iron very firmly because when you take the fittings off the heated iron, you don't want to end up with a, a, a bent end when you're pulling it off. You want to be able to separate them. I'll hold it with my hand there. You want to be able to separate them evenly, like that. You want to be able to take them off. So to have a second person there is a good idea. No disrespect to the majority of wives or husbands, but if it's the wife doing the job or it's the husband doing the job, run for a few beforehand just to make sure that she or he understands that they really have to hold it firmly. If you don't, you will have a situation where the pipes get joined and they're out of there like this at an angle when you want them there. Because the best way to get, well the only real way of getting them in properly is to put them in level. Sometimes if you put them on the floor, working on the floor, it's much easier, you can line them up. But you don't want a situation where it's too much this way or that way. You want them basically vertical or horizontal to the fitting you're joining. So, I will now just show you some of the things that we've done here in Villa Jane, we'll call it, in, the, in her home here. And it will show you to the extent of how the system is being used to supply the various parts in a, uh, a bathroom or a comfort room. So I'll just take you up there. Now in here in the main bathroom we have the connection coming up from downstairs where the supply comes into the house. We've allowed a single access point to the sink bench, just the one uh, water supply. We've also provided a outlet outside for a hose pipe and here we have one for one connection down here which is a female for the connection of a tap uh, not a tap it's actually a connection for the system which will have a flexi hose underneath the toilet and next to it we have a connection again another female which will have a bidet connection attached to that and then further along we have one for the bathtub that's going to be here I haven't yet uh, worked out exactly how I'm going to get hot water in here we may well have solar but at the moment it'll just be cold water uh, no not a cold bath but just cold water at the moment and like I was saying earlier there are different versions of shot off valves um, they have uh, ceramic uh, valves inside and that's there for a flexi hose to go up what will be an electric heater for the shower. So that's the layout here in the main bathroom upstairs. Now we're in the ensuite. There's the supply coming up again from downstairs. Uh, we yet have to put a... Oh no, that's right, we have allowed for that. No, we haven't. Uh, we have to put a junction in there for the connection to the cold water supply for the sink. Next to it again, we have the connection for the flexi pipe of the cistern, uh, the connection for a bidet, uh, a connection inside the shower cubicle which is for a bucket of water so there's a tap that's going to be uh, the shower cubicle area again up I've got a piece of timber just so they don't fall out uh, while well, they haven't been plastered that's the turn off for the water supply to the supply which will have a flexi hose again up to a water heater up there 
Now, just to give you an example, when one um, is able to join these, it's often better to, to do it on the floor, and that's what I did. It. The reason that the piece of timber there, just so they're holding up, they don't fall there. If I take that out, they'll fall off the wall. Quite a bit of work to chip out the wall so that they can be bedded in the wall eventually. So it's at the fit-out stage here. Now what I was referring to is it's a lot easier to do the actual joins um, when they're on the floor or down at the floor level uh, simply because you have a flat surface from which to do it. And it's just like putting Lego together. You just mark them where they're going to go and you cut the lengths and you join them with the welding system that you have. And then they'll be ready to put back into the channeling that you've dug out and you're away laughing. Right, now before I finish this demonstration, I'd like to actually just show you the iron working. Uh, I've plugged it into the power. As you'll see, there's uh, a red light just here. That's telling you that it's cooking not quite ready yet. It's like any electrical plant. When it's ready, it will start to flash and then the green light below it will come on. That is only time, that is the only time you can actually weld the two pieces together. Now, so I'm not wasting a lot of uh, bits and pieces, I'll select something that I can use again. Right, well I'll use an off-cut uh, pipe. First of all, to demonstrate what I was talking about. Now, first of all, I will mark the half inch marking that I that I intended to go no further than. And I will just show you how that looks. Then I'll also stick it in at, on the other end and I'll just let it push it in to the point where I'm not really too concerned. I'm just pushing it in and maybe getting a bit contrary. And you'll see what happens to the end of the pipe when you do that. So if you bear with me a little while, we should, I'll just turn it off in the meantime. Right, the light has suddenly come on green. So therefore we can proceed. Now, I'm on my own, so I will probably do my best to show you. I'll do it holding one hand. Right, now, this is what you do. There's your line. All you do is you push it in. Give it a little bit of a wiggle. And it will slowly, slowly get down to that line. You'll notice that while you do it, It's now in, probably more than it needs to be in terms of time, but I'll just keep pushing. I'm going to keep pushing more than the line itself. I'm leaving it in longer than it needs to be, just to demonstrate what I was talking about, restriction. Pull it out. Now, that's the problem if you push it in too far and hold it too long. You end up with a tiny little hole which is a restrictor. We often have fittings in Australia where they are restricting the flow of water and therefore that's not the best way to do it. So um, Now that is the same method and that is what you end up with. If you follow the six second rule and you push it in for the half inch, just under half an inch. Because what you want is you want that little lip. You want that little lip there because when you have the fitting itself, which I won't melt at the moment, but when that fits on top, that edge there will weld also to that that little lip, because it's both, both areas are soft. I'll demonstrate that in a minute. But as you can remember, 
If you push it in too far and hold it too long, that's the effect you'll have. Now, if you haven't realized that, you'll go ahead and do that, and you'll wonder why your system doesn't seem to be working as efficiently. And as you can see, you know, the, it's not very good as an end result. Whereas, following the rules, six seconds, you still have the good aperture on the pipe and they're able to be well. Now what I'll do is I'll cut off the bad bit and just wait for a few moments. Right, now I'm going to pick a, uh, a fitting that I've used before. We'll take this old T because I can cut that off afterwards too. Now. I'm not quite sure. I might just position the camera just a little bit differently. Now, I hope you can see that. Now, check to make sure that the light is on green, which it is. Now, I find that if you put the fitting that you're going to put on, onto that end first. Just line it up, ready to go. Line the other one up now. I'm using my finger to show myself. I'll probably be a bad boy. I'll go and just put a a little mark. There's your mark and we'll carry on and do it properly. Now back onto the job we just push them in very quickly up to the mark one two three four five six pull it apart then you just push them together to the point where the fitting is now joined with the ridge and you have a, a nice a nice fitting on the end. Now you might have to play that again for me to show you again because I don't want to use lots of fittings just to demonstrate it but I can use that now again. Um, I picked up the wrong one but that's okay. I've got an elbow. <laughs> Now one suggestion would be, and I, it's just a thought I thought, now if we all think about how the old thumbtack, the old uh, on the, the board to hold things onto, I was thinking probably one way of doing it is obviously it would be a good idea to make a plan showing roughly the directions and the, where the locations are of all of the joins, so that if there is a problem with a join, you can locate them fairly easily. As I'm the one that's put it in, obviously while I'm alive I know where they are approximately, but when I'm up and gone or somebody else has the house, I was thinking if you get a thumbtack with a fairly long pin, and if you do an accurate measurement as you're putting up the plasterboard, what a good idea would be would be to put just a thumbtack onto the ceiling, everywhere where there's a join. Now that might, in this case, there'll be sort of like uh, one, two in this room, one, two, three, three in the kitchen area, and a further one, um, two in the comfort room. Now, by doing that, it enables you with plasterboard. If there is a leak, you will see it eventually. And the easiest way to locate it will be just to cut a hole and uh, it's always a lot easier to fix plasterboard if there's a, a hole than it would be with um, plywood. So if you do that and you paint them the same colour as the ceiling, you might have some picky neighbour or a, a good friend who suddenly says, John, what's the uh, round thing on the ceiling there? Of course, there's always someone else bottom, but I think generally speaking you won't really see them. But it will enable you in the future, if there is a problem, to locate where the, the likelihood of a join uh, breaking or tripping from. So just an idea, uh, if we have to uh, show you how to patch a hole in a ceiling like that, that will be in a later video when I get the plasterboard up. But anyway, I hope this has been of some help to you, those that are planning on using the, the PPR white pipe high pressure pipe for their home because it, we don't have a great pressure here in 
Nagilin. And so we're going to have a, an auxiliary pump outside which will allow, um, it will be pre-primed, which will have a, um, what do you call it, a, a balloon which supplies a certain amount of pressure already in there. It's, um, and it's operated every time you turn a tap on, the pressure is always there. So it will enable the pressure downstairs and upstairs to be the same. Which is handy when you're having a shower upstairs and somebody downstairs is washing the dishes. <laughs> and you go, ah, especially if it's hot water. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Um, if there are any questions you need to ask, don't forget to drop me a line. You can either email me or um, just put it in the comments. So like, share and comment. Thanks for watching. Bye now.